Hello, and as always, thank you for tuning in again to watch another art tutorial video with me, Souffle Art. Today is a special kind of day. We're doing a community challenge, which was brought up by a fellow painter who interacts with me and other painters on a community known as Reddit. If you're unfamiliar with the site, Reddit is a large aggregation of multiple smaller communities where you can find niche specific interests that you enjoy, sign up and comment, share images and articles and discussion with other people who like the same interests as you. So in this particular case, this subreddit or subcategory of Reddit is known as poor painting specific to these acrylic flow arts that I've been doing with you all. If you'd like, I have links in the description where you can visit this Reddit. You can see the other artwork by the talented artist there. And you can, be, you can even sign up, share your own work, and contribute to the discussion. In the meantime, we're doing one of these community challenges. One of the people on the Poor Painting subreddit suggested that we do a painting with this neon pink, cobalt blue, a mid-white with metallic, and regular white paint. The goal here is going to be to add white paint to the top of the canvas, maybe one quarter of the canvas covering white paint, and leave that as a negative space on the canvas. The rest of it will be covered with a dirty pour combining these four colors. So here I have my offset spatula. Thank you again to everybody who commented to let me know the official name of this tool. And I'm going to show you a new feature that I've found is helpful with refreshing my dirty pores. So first off, put white on the bottom of the cup first. When the cup flips over, the white paint needs to fall to the bottom. It's most dense than most other paint colors. So as it sinks through, the other paint colors will get pressed up through the white paint and the curling acrylics will create those cell shapes. Now, when you're doing a dirty pour, as you can see here, imagine you have the colors white, pink, green, blue. Let me turn this for you. As you turn the cup out to get the paint out and down onto the canvas, the white never goes on top of the other colors. The white stays in the bottom corner here. And even more so, if I turn the cup, you can see that the colors will end up just laying thinly on top of each other. And there's hardly any mixing. There's no interplay with the colors in your paint cup doing a dirty pour. But instead, what if you were to put a straw into the bottom of the cup and give it a quick blow like you're trying to blow bubbles in chocolate milk. In this case, you're gonna put air into the bottom, hit the white paint, and it's gonna bubble up through the surface. You don't want to go overboard with this because you'll end up just blending all the colors and getting that muddy brown tone, but just a quick toot through the straw will get you enough air that the white will be released through the rest of the colors and you can get an interesting dirty pour that way. So that's what we're going to be looking at today as we do this community challenge. With that, I think it's about time to pour the paint. I'll speed the video up and we'll see how it turns out. Don't forget to look up Pour Painting on Reddit. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. actually had a lot of fun with that. The bubbles immediately produce some very interesting effects with the pink here and allowed the yellow which we poured at the bottom originally to filter back up through the cobalt and the pink. So it didn't just affect the bottom layer of paint but all four layers of paint got a greater interplay as a result. I like that technique. I'll probably integrate that more with my dirty pores. I wouldn't say it's essential because when you're doing dirty pours, half the time you want an effect where the paint will gradually slink off. So looking back at our example where you have the four layers of paint and they each angle out of the cup thinly dripping, if you were to consider that, you're going to get the most of the top color as you get a dirty pour, 
followed by more of the second, more of the third, and finally most of the fourth. So as you move the cup across the canvas, you can even see here where we got the most whites, then the most yellows, then the most pinks, and the most blue. That's one of the effects of a dirty pour. So sometimes you're gonna want that unbubbled, just a solid dirty pour the way anybody would normally do it. But in a case like this, we got a little greater play between the colors because we bubbled it first. So let me know if you're able to experiment with that. Let me know if you're able to try this challenge for yourself and be sure to post on reddit.com slash r slash pour painting, link in the description. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. Let me know what other projects you'd like to see me attempt or if there's any challenges you're looking for or maybe a color scheme that you've had on your mind for a while. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.